Okay, hi. Thanks for staying in this cold room. It's probably uh, colder in here than in Antarctica. I think Antarctica got to 65 degrees, and it's definitely colder than 65 degrees in here. Uh, so, uh, I'm a, my name's Donnie. I'm a co-founder of Sobel.io. Um, and uh, we're, we're trying to, well, I'll get into what we are, but um, when I tell people, uh, when I say the word DAO, I don't know if you were on the DAO Fest website, but there's a thing that says, what is a DAO? But the people, uh, my friends and family, they don't say, what is a DAO? They say, what the fuck is a DAO? Because, you know, it's a strange word. So that's why I'm calling this presentation, what the fuck is a DAO? Um, and kind of how Sobel's the bridge between the Web 2 and the Web 3 worlds. Um, so we want to... Um, oh, and by the way, I'm going to make fun of DAOs, but it comes from a good spot. I love DAOs, but kind of how we think about bridging the gap. Uh, so this is how our kind of mission. We want to accelerate the transition to decentralized and humanistic work. Um, that's kind of a lot of what DAOs are doing, decentralizing how organizations operate, um, and ideally providing a little more humanism into what you do every day, as opposed to the bureaucracy and the hierarchy. Um, so we're big on pragmatism uh, in the sense that we know we live in the world as it currently exists. We know uh, who has the power in the world and we obviously want to migrate the world towards a different future, but we're not starting from a place where we're pretending that uh, all sorts of people are going to be ready to jump into the decentralized movement or uh, um, uh, the blockchain space or DAOs or whatever. So we're living in the world as it is with the goal of making it as we want it to be. Um, so here's, uh, you know, when people say, what the fuck is a DAO? You know, first the first problem we have is that it's an acronym, which I just think is a terrible, I don't know who came up with this, but to have a movement be represented as an acronym, so then it's not only people don't understand what a DAO is, but then you have to explain what the acronym stands for, and then even then the words in the acronym don't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. Um, and then we th when we think about DAOs, we think it's already a niche part of a niche industry. So we're getting super niche with what we're talking about. But on the positive side, it is a really cool, inspiring way to imagine the future of work. So we think about approaching it from a Web2 place first, um, using simpler language, onboarding teams without scaring them away with big words or futuristic phrase, cyberpunk phrases. Um, and we hope that this approach will appeal to more than just very niche sectors or industries, and it will continue to be a very cool, inspiring way to imagine the future of work. So we don't refer to a DAO as a DAO. Uh, we, instead of calling it a DAO, we just call it a team. Uh, and then in this case, a uh, team is represented with a capital T, or a DAO is a team of teams. And that we find that's a lot simpler, and I have the head explode emoji because it shouldn't make your head explode, but uh, you know, we find it's just an easier way to talk to people of what we're trying to say. So DAO is a capital T teams. Um, and then what's the difference between a capital T team and a lowercase t team? Well, we think like a true team works together to accomplish goals, but if you've worked for a big company, even a big tech company, they really operate in terms of lowercase t teams where you have people who are competing with each other. So you're on a team, you're supposed to try to, to accomplish the same thing, but you end up competing with each other, whether it's for compensation, promotion, recognition, or whatever. Uh, capital T team doesn't need a manager. It can be decentralized, uh, whereas a lowercase t team, that's where you need that manager to 
deal with that bureaucracy, the paperwork, things like that. Capital T team, uh, you can determine value capture as a team as opposed to having a manager or some um, HR people that don't actually know what people in the team are doing day to day. So we think of like, who's the best person to evaluate members of the team? Well, it's the members of the team, uh, collectively. Um, there's tons of biases to managing performance with, with a lowercase t team. We try to get rid of those with the capital uh, case t team. And then we also have you know, this idea that we can continue to bring the humanistic work where you're doing what you enjoy uh, as opposed to some bureaucratic hierarchical stuff. Um, and then we think about what does this platform for teams need? So we're not trying to be a DAO in the sense that you need to be able to send some store of value around or currency or stake, but there's other basics that you need. So in this case, role setting, goals, agreements, and a ledger of activity so people know what's happened in the role, the goals, the team, things like that. Um, so this is Sobel.io, and I will jump into a quick little uh, visualization. So um, this is Sobel. Uh, this is a, a demo environment called Cyberstorm Entertainment. So basically, it's a robust way to view an organization. So if I want to go into a specific team, I can find out all about that team, what they're working on, who's the contact, um, link out to things. We can create our goals. You can do that in a variety of ways. In this case, you can manage goals across people and across teams, and all that updating in real time. You can close out goals, attach different things. So really robust way to do goal setting as opposed to OKR software. Again, because we're focused on people and not titles, people actually are roles and have multiple roles across an organization. So uh, you can see all the roles on this team. Uh, you can d dig into the specific descriptions, what people want out of that role. Um, and then, you know, importantly, how do you have these agreements about how the team operates and a way to sign, uh, sign those? And then da same thing with the ledger of activity, ways to have discussions make decisions uh, all from the team as opposed to uh, an org chart or uh, uh, hierarchy. Um, so uh, I'll end there. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at Sobel.io or Twitter at Team Sobel. Uh, I don't know if any of the few people in the room have any questions, but I'm happy to answer. Yeah. I, uh I have a couple questions. Um, sorry about the, the showing, but we do have high quality audio video for your uh, delight. Um, my, my question here is, you know, when, when Sobel is, is out of the demo environment and you're, you're sort of moving to the, the proof of concept, you know, trying this with, with different firms, companies, is there a particular uh, corporate structure that you're imagining or is this something that will redefine uh, the structure and, and, and kind of create some different opportunities for, for horizontal formations? So I think you can run, or not I think, I know that you can run teams if you want to be completely decentralized, but then some organizations will put in like an executive team circle or they will create a, um, a field in their summaries of manager. So you will have like, you'll see who your manager is. So that's why I think of it as like, we're bridging these two worlds. So you can do both. You can run a totally remote decentralized team in Sobel, easy, but it also allows more legacy organizations to slowly move over without managers and feeling like they have to give up power or executives feeling like they have to give up power. You know, they can still show, you can still, you can even still do titles in Sobel. Um, we see it all, but that's again, we think we want to help people naturally migrate there which I think they want, uh, as opposed to uh, overly complicated and say you should have a DAO and then they go, what the fuck is a DAO? So. Now is there, is there like a, a co-budgeting uh, component here or, or is uh, this simply you know, managerial structure uh, agreements on who does what sort of task management uh, software in a sense? Y yeah, kind of what you just said as opposed to we don't do co-budgeting, but ideally we'd like to integrate with 
teams that are building the co-budgeting stuff. This is more like organs. This is like the COO would want to know about the org and the legacy environment, how the how the teams actually structured, or how the groups actually structured versus you know hierarchy. Cool. Concept of holacracy. Yeah. So, what? How do you? What's your kind of response to if you were to go to an organization like this? Sounds like holacracy that didn't, you know, has a reputation or whatever. Yeah, we get that a lot. Um, so I just say like holacracy is a very rigid. I, for, holacracy works for teams. Great. I'm not putting down holacracy at all. Um, but it is a more structured way. Um, and I know the holacracy, people will say it, it isn't, but I think when you approach team, again, holacracy, it's another word where it's just, you know, it's, it, I think it overly complicates things. Um, whereas this is, like, you can continue to run your organization exactly as you, in Sobel, as you are right now, uh, but maybe the way you view your organization or the way information flows changes, and that kind of changes how you think about uh, how you how you should be designing your organization. Uh, so uh, you can run holacracy in Sobel almost. We'll get there soon. Where if you wanted to run it, set it up so you could. But um, uh, I think part of the reason this is purely my hypothesis that uh, maybe self-managed holocratic style didn't really get very far. Um, it seems like it's peaked is because it's it sounds more confusing than it probably is and it's not easily explainable and it it requires teams to just jump into it like a, Zappos is the classic case study on this where they're like we're just doing it and you can we'll give you severance if you don't want to be a part of it um, but I think that's the only example of a larger organization that has you know from the top decided so hopefully more teams will migrate there but I just don't like from the pr pragmatic side, I just don't imagine um, teams jumping there instantly. Cool, you good? I'm good. Thanks for the question. <laughs>